So with that said, we're going to welcome in 8680 Kraken Pinion. Welcome, uh, everybody. Let us know who you are, and uh, let's jump into what you've been doing here so far. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Uh, I'm Ryan, and so far I've started progress on a linear actuator which we are going to use to extend uh, as a uh, claw for now up to one of the bars over here, the colored bars. Rigging. Rigging. That's what it's called. Rigging. 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 Okay, the rig. Um, and we're going to attach a claw originally and extend to grab and then retract, pulling the robot up. Later on in the season, we might switch over and flip it upside down and use them as pistons instead in order to mount it. In order to use a claw that's already on the Um, I'm Corey. The primary thing that myself and Brady have been working on is we have slides on the robot for the outtake. So we're going to use that. We're going to have a claw type mechanism on the end here. And we're going to use that to extend up and place the pixels on the backdrop. Um, additionally, we have a fold down intake in the front. Uh, so that folds down so we can reach out farther, but folds up so it's small to start and within the sizing limit. I have a question from Pink. Um, what is the reasoning behind mounting the wheels on the inside of the drivetrain? Oh, um, I think I get that. So our drivetrain, it's composed of custom CNC plates. So the wheels are sandwiched between two sets of plates. Uh, and that supports them on both sides, so it makes it much more rigid. And it's a very solid chassis. I'm Mateo, and I've been working on our drone launcher, which consists of a servo that is attached to a rubber band that will be able to launch our drone up and over the and out of the field. So basically, we initially started by um, using paper clips, but we originally found that using that as a way to attach the rubber band to the plane was illegal. So we decided to have a paper airplane that has a built-in notch to the paper airplane. That way, the rubber band is still able to connect to it. And through many trial and errors, we're able to decide which which design mechanics that we needed to add, such as this guide, to allow, to, to allow the drone to have more consistent travel patterns that le way at least is able to go straight. Yes, yes, Chet? We have a question from Helen Saunders. What have you done with drone prototyping and what design has worked best so far? I got it. So initially, we started with the standard paper airplane design, but in order to launch it, we had to cut notches into the paper airplane, which we found was really inefficient because after three or two two trials, it would like get destroyed and we had to make a new paper airplane. So we just we just designed this. You need to hold the mic. What? You need to hold the mic. Yeah. Yeah. So then we we. We designed a new unique airplane that is way smaller than the average airplane and has this built-in notch into the back of it. That way it's the rubber band to it, but not... That way the rubber band is still able to connect to the back of it, but not interfere with its flying capabilities and durability. Yes, Jet? I have another question from Pink. What would the handoff from the rollers to the claw look like? regarding the pixels. 
Okay, so that's currently being designed, but essentially it's just going to be in the exact same shape as a regular pixel, just like a little bit larger than it. And it's going to have sides to it, and it'll hold two at a time because it's how many the robot can hold. And then it'll have like holes in the side right here so that a claw can like come in from the top and grab it like that. And then we'll also have a um, like open slot right here and right here so that we can use a servo and push like the pixel out onto these locations if that's necessary. Yes, I have two questions. Question one is from Software Poet. What have you tried with the backdrop? How much do pixels bounce if you drop them from the top? How hard does a robot have to hit the board to knock any pixels off? Any other observations regarding the backdrop? I know that's something we tested earlier today. And we have an expert right here. So we'll wait on that. Right, so uh, we haven't really tested like placing stuff on the black on the backdrop, but like for the most part, if you look over here, like it's pretty it's pretty all right if you drop it from the top. But as you can see, if you yeah, and if you like even bump it like a little bit like that, you can see it really doesn't require that much force to like knock them off. So you really have to be careful when you're like placing stuff on here. Otherwise, you may lose all of your points. In chat, we do have a uh, video that Crack and Penning filmed a little while ago that we'll be releasing this evening that gives a full detail of what that looks like. So if you want to see a whole bunch of tests like that, we do have that coming out soon. we got about two more minutes for Crack and Penning, so I'm going to let Crack and Penning talk about anything else they want to cover. And then if we have time for questions, we'll get to those before we get to our next team. So in terms of the programming we've done so far, uh, we currently have just uh, used April tags to... We currently have made a program that is able to detect the April tags and uh, just pr prints out the telemetry for the, prints out the ID of the April tag. And we're also working on OpenCV to detect the, um, what is it called? The custom element? Absolutely. Yeah, the, the custom element and uh, the position of it. So yeah, that's where we've got the programming. Good. I have a question from Stateline Homeschool Robotics, which is, are you keeping your robot under 14 inches? Yes, we are. So I think currently it's at like around 13. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Do you think we can yeah. answer that? Yeah. 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 So as you can see, it clears right under there. Our goal is to not build any higher than that unless necessary. and. I have a lot of questions, so I'll try and get through one more, um, which is from Abraham Mahmoud, which is, how do you plan on picking up pixels from the wall stack during autonomous? Um, that's something we've discussed a little bit for design, but that's one of the big things we're still working on. We don't have a finalized design for that, um, but we're going to work on designing something that works in conjunction with our wheeled intake. So, Kraken, as you look into uh, day one being complete, what is kind of your next, like, must-dos uh, for tonight going into tomorrow? All right. Well, first off, um, we have the basket for the transfer between the intake and the outtake printing right now. So our goals are probably to test that and make sure it works and then print out a full better design and then also finish our intake. And then we will start working on the actual claw for the outtake itself. Awesome. Well, good luck out uh, the rest of the way. We got seven more teams coming. Let's get cracking, pinning a big round of applause here uh, in our audience. And uh, we're going to reset here. Our next team coming up is going to be uh, 6460 coming up in just some Thanks a lot, cracking. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.